Hey, what's up my fellow carnivores? Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to carve up a brisket nice and pretty down to the red meat. That way we get that great crust on that brisket that everybody's always looking for. We're gonna trim this puppy up and we're gonna make it just right. So stick around, because we're gonna to get to that right now. All right, so we're here with our full packer brisket, and if you don't know what that means, that just means that the point, the thicker portion, or the fattier portion of the brisket, and the flat, the leaner portion of the brisket, are still together. You can purchase these separately some places, or you can get a butcher to maybe just serve you up the flat, or however you wanna do it. But today we are dealing with the full packer, and we're gonna do a quick trim up so that we can cook this thing tonight. So first of all, uh, what we're doing here, and just to sum up in case you don't have time, stick around for this whole video, is all the hard fat needs to go on this side. Every bit of it, every bit of the hard fat needs to go. Definitely wanna get the majority of it for sure. And then on the other side, you've got a solid fat cap and you wanna trim that down to around a quarter of an inch. Be careful not to get into the meat too much because that does act as a protective layer to the meat on that side, which for me, big controversial subject here. So hold on to your horses. I like to cook my brisket fat cap down. You'll see a lot of comparison videos. Uh, fat cap up versus fat cap down. I like my fat cap down. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim all this off and we're gonna set the fat aside and we're gonna be using that to make our own beef tallow. So let's go ahead and get into carving this thing up right now. First of all, this brisket is just thawed. Still a little bit frozen in the middle and that's how you want it. The colder, the better. It makes it easier to hold on and manipulate the fat. You also wanna have a very sharp knife. You don't wanna be trying to push. You want it to slide through as good as possible. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna just take a paper towel and pat dry the meat as best as you can. That way it's not slick. Wet meat is very slick. And like I said just a second ago, if you're doing it right, you're gonna have a very sharp knife. So we wanna avoid slips. So once you've got your brisket dried off a little bit, and you've got your knife sharp, what you wanna do is just start off with this thick fat. This is hard fat and you can tell by the texture of it when you get your fingers on it that it is hard and it will not render down. It will just thicken up and get tough and create a really bad bite for anybody that you're cooking for. Don't worry about making two passes or three passes or whatever it is that you need to do. Take a pass, see what you got left up under there, and then go in for another pass if need be. Don't worry if you take a little bit of meat. This is a huge chunk of meat. So look, all that is just straight up fat. Nobody wants to bite into that at all. We're just gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna go back in for another plunge into this hard fat. And you can see it's got nice marbling in the meat. It's not Wagyu and it's not prime because I don't roll like that. But I have also found that sometimes with some of those higher quality, more expensive cuts, what you end up with is what some people call a one slice brisket, which means that one slice is so rich that is pretty much all people can tolerate eating. I don't know if you've ever had a super duper rich piece of brisket, but man, it is filling and uh, not something everybody's into. So sometimes you're actually gonna benefit a little bit by a slightly leaner cut if you cook it right and maintain the moisture that's in it. And pretty much everywhere that you cut this off and you get it down to the meat, it's just gonna be somewhere where the seasoning is able to penetrate the meat, the smoke is able to penetrate because you just don't get good penetration into this fat. It'll just sit on top of it. The fat's gonna break down a little bit, sweat off, and it's gonna take the seasoning with it. The smoke's not gonna penetrate it as much and you're just not gonna end up with as high quality of a product as you would as if you trim some of this off. I usually like to use a fillet knife when I'm doing this but I'll be darned, I cannot find my fillet knife anywhere. I do not know where it is. So I've got this knife that I like. It's not flexible the way that a fillet knife is. But sometimes, you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Especially 
when you're scheduled for brisket tacos during the uh, football game tomorrow. I don't know who y'all are rooting for in the 2021 college football playoffs, but uh, if you watch any of my videos, you probably have a decent idea who I'm pulling for. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this and you've got a large chunk of hard fat that runs all the way down the side of this brisket. And we're gonna just try to get the majority of this in just one big cut. Just one big chunk of fat that runs all the way down. Every once in a while, I'll just sort of peel it back to see if you're getting into the meat, which you can see I'm not. And so obviously you're looking at this and you can tell that, that is not gonna be anything that ever renders it's just gonna be a huge chunk of fat that nobody wants to take a bite of. So you might watch other people cut these up and say, man, they're, they're doing a little different than that get it, but there's several different ways that people are going to uh, trim these briskets. And one is gonna be for a competition cook. For a competition cook, you're gonna be removing so much because you want it to be absolutely perfect and you'll throw away large amounts of meat. You'll throw away tons of the product that you paid good money for because you don't care how much meat you've got at the end. You just want the best parts of all of it to be what remains because that is what you're gonna serve up to the judges. A lot of those guys are gonna have five or six briskets that they cook and they're gonna take parts from the best ones this is a backyard brisket that we're making here. This is, you're gonna be feeding people with it and you want as much as possible to remain at the end. So you can see that fat that we've trimmed off of the outside edge here. Got a little meat exposed and you can go a little deeper if you want just to try to get more of that meat exposed. I kind of like the way that this is coming along. Another type of person that you'll see cutting this up is gonna be a person that's preparing it for a restaurant. And in a restaurant, what they're gonna do is they're gonna trim a ton of the meat off. And that's because they want a uniform product. They want everything to be as close to the same thickness as possible. Because when they serve up a plate to one person, they want it to be just as good for the person beside them, person beside them, person beside them. So they trim off a ton of the meat. And what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to feed as many people as possible. We're not trying to get you to come back. We just want you to have a big belly at the end of it. So this is starting to look really good. I do think I'm going to take a little bit more off of this because I think that, yeah, that's bad. Still there, pretty good. I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper here. I know it seems like you're losing a lot of what you paid for, but you have to remember that nobody wants this bite. Nobody wants this bite. Nobody wants just a pure fat bite. You want some fat along with the beef and you want the fat melting into the beef to make it nice and juicy and succulent. But I kind of like the way that this looks and I don't think I'm gonna dig on it too much more. I might pick at it just a little bit because that's just the way that I am. But we're gonna go ahead and get this thing flipped over. Still a little stiff. Like I said, you want it stiff, that way it's easier to handle. So this is your fat side, as you can see. We got a nice thick fat cap. Check what you're cutting every once in a while. Make sure you're not getting into the meat too much. This area down here is actually not as thick as I thought it was. And just take your time. Remember, don't rush. You're using a sharp knife and you are prepping a very expensive, for most of us anyway, piece of meat. So that all that in there is about a quarter inch thick. I don't wanna fool with that too much more. You know, the first brisket that I trimmed, I'm thinking, Fat is flavor, you know? I don't need to cut all this off. This is what makes it good. <laughs> it was a bite to remember when you got up one of these big chunks. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Uh, there was definitely some undesirable textures. 
And so you can go and you can carve this thing up a little bit too. Try to shape it up the way you want it. That way presents a little bit better. You know, you eat with your eyes first, as they say. Everything else looks pretty good to me. I might come in here and take a little bit of this off. You just want to make sure that you don't have a half inch, inch thick chunk. Just make sure that you're taking your time. Last thing you want to do is get in a hurry and have people blood all over your brisket. If you've got any carving tips for anybody, make sure you leave those in the comments below. Any brisket tips, tricks, family secrets passed down from generation to generation. The kind of stuff you don't normally tell people, you can tell me. I won't tell nobody. Just leave it in the comment section below. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll trim this off right here to try to make a more uniform cut. I am not going to do that. You can do that. You might see people do that for competition cuts. Just sort of round that off because this is thinner. But I intend to eat every bit of this. Um, and then some people will also come and round this off a little bit as well. And this did get cut up a little bit in the butchering process. So I am going to come right there and just make one little cut. Not losing a whole lot of protein that way. Shaping it up a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks. And you can nitpick at this thing all day. And if nobody was here and I wasn't making a video, I might would just because I don't, I, it's not work for me. I enjoy this sort of thing. Making it all pretty. One more thing, a lot of time you will see people come in, and there's a big vein of fat that runs in between these two. You will see people come in and remove some of that. We'll, move, we'll remove some of that here now, just to show you what I'm talking about. That's just gonna run in between those two muscles, in between the point and the flat. Big chunk of fat. The more of this I cut off, and this is how you should be thinking about it. The more beef tallow I'll extract. That'll take seasoning just a little bit better than it would have if I hadn't removed it. But that's it. <laughs> Which is larger, the pile of fat or the brisket? If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll be happy to chat it up with you guys. And hopefully, maybe there's somebody out there that can tell me something and make me better at trimming my briskets. Thank y'all so much, and we'll see y'all in the next video.